on aging and practical applications for healthy aging. Uh, I'll be skipping around in here. You can read it at your leisure later on. But I want to open up with saying a few things. You know, I don't like a strict diet. I like eating well. I like sugars and butter and spices and cream. Uh, everything nice. I like a lot of salt. Uh, I can tolerate a healthy diet, but clearly it's not my preference. At the same time, I have slowly become accustomed to better for you foods. I don't especially enjoy exercise. I enjoy it if I'm going for a walk or a hike and I'm with somebody and but I don't especially enjoy exercise, especially vigorous exercise. I've been led to believe that the kind of exercise that is best for me lasts at least a half an hour and preferably more an hour. And there should be short periods of strong and intense exertion. This too will help me with aging. But that kind of exercise is really painful. Uh, running, pumping iron, uh, uh, getting sweaty, it, it's painful. And it gets, after a while, it gets damn boring too. I have to admit that if I begin exercising, after a short while it gets easier for a while. Uh, but then my muscles begin to ache and I have to switch to something else. So I switch around. Um, I don't especially like it, uh, but uh, I know that it will help me to age better. Winter is the worst time for me and for many people in terms of exercise. More rain and cold so I have to stay indoors more, or that's the choice at any rate. And uh, I end up using machines, and uh, I'll turn on the radio so that you know it produces a distraction. But then I forget how many times I've taken my bell bars up when I turn on the radio. So what do I do? I do want to live longer. I know I must die, but I don't like that prospect. I want to be around longer. I want to stay healthy until near the end of life. And then I hope I can succumb rapidly. A quick death. Gavin didn't have exactly a quick death, but at least until the last couple of months, he was able, he was, he kept on talking and, and, and thinking and doing interesting things, presenting services here. A curious mind. Uh, I hope that I can be relatively healthy until near the end. So let me tell you about healthy aging. Welcome to my world. Maybe it's yours too. Sharing some thoughts. Uh, it's very important to me to understand how it works. And I don't understand it at many, many levels. This is so damn complex. You know, you can get down to the subatomic level and it does have to do with healthy aging. But I'm going to present some of the important ideas about healthy aging. The whole universe functions on energy. The whole universe. A major source of energy for our living creatures is metabolism. Metabolism is defined as chemical reactions involved in maintaining the living state of cells and the organism. 
the living state of cells and organisms. It can be conveniently divided into two categories, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is the breakdown of molecules to release energy and dispose of waste. Breaking down, the energy release provides fuel for anabolism. It provides fuel for our body functions. Anabolism is the constructive part. It involves the buildup or synthesis of compounds needed by our cells. The body requires the energy from catabolism to synthesize, to synthesize new proteins, to synthesize nucleic, nucleic acids for DNA and RNA and other compounds. An analogy here is fire. Fire requires, requires a fuel, such as wood, plus air, with oxygen in the air. When those two are combined, it allows for combustion, <laughs> and all that's needed then is something hot needed to begin the process. Fire leads to a biochemical reaction it results in the destruction of the original materials, the wood, and the oxygen in the air. They get destroyed. And a transformation into heat, that's energy, with ashes and smoke, especially CO2, carbon dioxide. That's when the oxygen changes, combines with carbon. Uh, and that's a byproduct. The smoke, of course, it degrades the climate over time, and the ash can build up to such a degree that you can't even start another fire. And that's an analogy to what happens in our body. We need the oxygen, we need the, the fuel, but waste products build up. Fortunately, to put this in a broader perspective, Plants require the CO2, the stuff that comes from burning, the stuff that comes from also uh, our breathing out. If their function, plants require the CO2 for their functioning and growth, or they would die. So animals, with their metabolism and fires, take from plants and produce CO2 that plants must have to survive. We are part of this marvelous synergy, necessary multi-layered interdependence throughout a whole ecosystem. It is all inspiring complexity. In our bodies, we use glycogen, that's the sugar part, from our blood as the fuel. And we combine that with oxygen to produce energy. In addition to that energy, byproducts are created in the form of waste materials <coughs> and also something called free radicals. I maybe remember a James Bond movie from 40 years ago in which he said, to hell with the free radicals, I'm going to eat. <laughs> and he had these marvelous cheeses and so forth. We've known about free radicals for a long time. <coughs> Over time, some of the waste products are not eliminated and gradually build up, leading to cells that are less effective. <coughs> and the free radicals create electrons, which attach to molecules and transform them, often destroying parts of cells. Of course, all of our cells in our bodies wear out and must be replaced, or else the function the cell performs will be impaired. Kidneys, liver, heart, sex organs, lung, they all require the manufacturing of new cells to perform the same function as dying cells. Otherwise, the organs begin to fail. In order to produce a new cell, 
DNA from within the cell must first divide. Remember, this is the, the origin of life, the origin of, the origin of so much. To replicate a cell, your DNA and RNA, they must uh, divide to provide the blueprint for the new cell. Otherwise, the new cell will not function in the same way as the old one. So, that DNA replication is, is, is one of the basics. How does it become damaged? What causes cells to die? There are two theories of aging. One theory emphasizes glycogen, the fuel. And it emphasizes the end products that accumulate, mostly undesirable end products, like the ashes from the fire. The second theory focuses on oxygen. It is proposed that as oxygen is combusted, oxidative stress and free radicals occur, and they are responsible for aging. Each of our cells, each of our cells in our body require oxygen and glycogen to function and allow the body to work. It's many extraordinarily complex miracles. Uh, okay. I'm going to talk now about glycation theory. One of the theories, one of the two theories. This was introduced only about 32 years ago by a guy by the name of Cerami. And he proposed that when our bodies produce proteins, uh, or, I'm sorry, when our bodies process proteins and sugars, that's the glucose, they produce end products. These are a result of metabolism. At a very basic level, an elementary level, atoms are transformed as metabolism occurs. And unfortunately, frequently, cross-links between adjacent protein strands in the body are made. These cross-links cause RNA and DNA damage within the cells. And that RNA and DNA must be precisely replicated, exactly replicated, in order for the cell division to occur properly. Randy, what is RNA? Uh, I don't have any clue about that. That's a sugar. It's got name of sugar. Yeah. And Senior moment. What happens is that positive and negative ions <coughs> are attracted to the molecule, and it gets out of balance when there are too many positive or too many, basically too many negative. RNA is the transporter, and it, it, it functions within a cell. DNA, DNA is, of course, the, the major blueprint, but DNA uh, has to be transported, and RNA functions as a transporter. Uh, on the one hand, you don't have to worry if some cells die. We have over a hundred bill trillion cells in our body. If we can survive when hundreds, even thousands of cells die. However, eventually cell deaths accumulate in vital organs and are not replenished. What are some signs of aging? Oh God, look at me. Here, see those brown spots all around there? And in my neck, I've got the wrinkles, and up here too, bald head, and eyes that aren't functioning quite as well, and I can hardly hear people anymore. <laughs> hey, all of this is part of aging. And uh, high blood pressure, uh, hardening of the arteries, memory problems, you know, the, uh, 
all stuff. Much of it because the bad stuff isn't filtered out of our body so fast. Well, what causes aging? At least glycation series says, hey, high levels of sugar in our blood produces glycation and AGEs. That's something if you study this, you'll, you'll find the professionals talking about AGEs. Advanced glycation end products. These end products that make diabetes, which I have, at least mildly, uh, a model for accelerated aging. Consider, our bodies were not really designed to accommodate raw sugars. They just weren't. As our species was being formed thousands upon thousands of years ago, our ancient ancestors ate a lot of fruit, vegetables, and some meats. These foods were all complex, full of fiber. They were digested slowly. Oftentimes in very ancient times, you know, fire wasn't available and an animal was killed and eaten rapidly without cooking. These foods were all complex, full of fiber, were digested slowly. That's what our internal systems were designed for. And these same physiological systems are part of every one of us. Another aspect of our thinking, our nearest evolutionary neighbor is the chimpanzee. They eat small amounts of meat, very small amounts. If they can catch a monkey, or a rat or something, yeah, they'll eat it raw. Some bugs and grubs, never cooked, but their major part of their diet, the huge portion of their diet, comes from plants and fruits. But much of our eating today is composed of processed foods, simple sugars, Furthermore, we cook our foods and reduce the fiber content. Spikes of blood sugar occur and bring on inflammation and autoimmune processes, autoimmune responses. If you read the literature on aging, so much is written about inflammation. It's exceedingly important. Inflammation producing you know, problems with our arteries, inflammation. If your body is inflamed, you age much, much more rapidly. Inflammation occurs due to rapid burning of simple sugars and starches. It isn't quite as simple as that. And many of you might not like to hear this, this stuff, but in fact, sugars are converted ordinarily to fat cells. A slow buildup of fat cells leads to more inflammation. People who have a lot of a lot of fat on them don't get cold as readily. That in part is related to inflammation. Uh, inflammation is not a part of normal cell energy production, and it's a prime cause of most illnesses and disabilities. Well, what can be done? You probably have heard this over and over again, but a diet low in processed sugars and starches. Am I teaching, <laughs> preaching to the choir? Probably, yeah. Okay. A diet low in processed sugars and starches. A low glycemic diet will help. Aspirin. You know, the, I take a baby aspirin every day. Aspirin can reduce inflammation. Vigorous exercise uses up some of the glycogen, reducing blood, uh, blood spikes, blood spikes. I've read, I don't know how 
accurate this is because there hasn't been a huge amount of research, but there's some. Um, the best time to exercise is actually shortly after you eat. It reduces the spikes in the glycogen. I don't know. There's not a lot of research on that. Most of this stuff that I am describing, there is a, a hell of a lot of research now. 30 years ago, boy, the research wasn't present. And it was, it was, it was, or it was uh, not good cause and effect research. At any rate, I want to talk about the second theory now for a little while. Oxid oxidation stress and free radical theory of aging. Okay, we all, all the animals burn fuel. They metabolize glycogen using oxygen. Metabolism involves splitting atoms, producing water and carbon dioxide plus free radicals. They escape and are spun off. When you breathe out in a cold day, you see mist, mist of water in your breath. Carbon dioxide is also part of the air coming out of your body. I've talked about the fact that oxygen, you know, uh, uh, is necessary for us. But some of the oxygen atoms strip electrons from other atoms and molecules and produce things like, and this is within our body, things like peroxide, nitrous oxide, hydroxyl radicals, and other chemicals. Peroxide, nitrous oxide, that's toxic stuff. And if oxygen is free, not, not bound, it, it leads to some serious stuff going on in your body. Uh, oxygen is absolutely superb at changing other atom structures. Remember, this is one of the most toxic uh, elements in the universe. It's important because this can lead to oxidative stress. Wikipedia defines oxidative stress as, quote, an imbalance between the syst systemic manifestation of reactive oxygen species and a biological system's ability to readily detoxify the reactive intermediaries or repair the resulting damage. Imbalance, imbalance. Boy, if everything is working well, the oxygen combines with some iron in your blood, that's hemoglobin, the blood goes to the cells, and the oxygen is released in the cells. And if everything works well, but unfortunately, unfortunately, and especially as we get older, there is some oxygen leakage. Uh, okay. Uh, in addition to producing carbon dioxide, there is a brief production of free radicals. They're radical in the sense that they can easily attract other atoms, thus changing the structure of nearby atoms. Free radicals are unstable, highly unstable, and uh, they can have a cascading effect. If there isn't anything to stop the free radical, hundreds will be produced within seconds, hundreds more. That's happening within our body all the time, and it happens more frequently as you get older. In doing so, they cause extensive damage to RNA, DNA, and cell proteins. They damage this is a major factor. In addition to the oxygen itself, it's the free radicals. Uh, 
free radicals is in, are increased by cigarette smoking, uh, air pollution, the use of many industrial chemicals, some that you'll find in your home. We'll talk about that in just a little while in greater detail. Um, and in addition, there's good research now that indicates that uh, there's a relation between free radicals and excessive use of saturated fats and oils. So, air pollution, smoking, fats and oils. We need oxygen to the lid. We need it to metabolize our food and, and produce energy. But we, we, we would die without, without it within minutes. But high concentrations of oxygen that aren't used rapidly uh, in metabolism lead to oxidative stress and are toxic to living things. They are toxic because they produce free radicals and free radicals take atoms from DNA and proteins and cell membranes and many vital structures. So, there are two major ways of combating cell draft, death and related degradation of body organs. First, stronger and more rapid metabolism. More rapid metabolism, speeding it up, leads to less oxidative stress, leads to reduced radic free radicals, and therefore formation of waste products in the system. Secondly, if antioxidant defenses, we've all heard about antioxidants. I'm sure you've heard about that. Well, I'm not sure, but most of you have. They provide atoms at the originating site of free radicals, the antioxidants in your system. Thus, the free radicals bind to the antioxidants. It stops that cascade. The free radicals last for a, a much shorter period of time and are less destructive and are carried out of your body. Antioxidant defenses gain strength from several sources. Our internal immune system obviously is important. And it's a major system, uh, source of defense. In addition, to deal with the free radicals, diet, exercise, stress reduction, and other factors. We're going to get to those in just a minute. Those two theories just fit together, each stressing a different aspect of metabolism. One the fuel, the other the oxygen. They both focus, focus though, on cell disability and, and cell death due to aging. Okay. Most of the nutritionists and specialists in, in exercise and healthy aging do believe that it is possible to live a long life and die rapidly live a long life and a healthy life, keeping the mind pretty healthy, uh, the body's pretty healthy, and then dying at the end more rapidly. Factors that produce healthy aging. Some of, most of this you guys know, but I hope that some of this you may not know, and I hope you'll take, you'll begin reading up on it, and considering it. No smoking, no high alcohol intake, both significantly increase free radical production. Look, solvents. Water is a solvent. And it's, it's something that we can handle readily. But all solvents dissolve things. 
almost all except water are toxic and are capable of dissolving parts of our body i ordinarily just don't think about this i pump the gas some spills on me a little bit maybe have you ever noticed it burns after a while if you don't wash it off it burns and you know if you inhale too much of the fumes of gas you'll get sick and if you can't get away from it you'll die uh, so some of the solvents that are the worst for you are methyl alcohol these are things that are many of which might be in your home methyl alcohol gasoline you know we use a lot of it and hey you can get away with uh, uh, being at the pump for a few seconds but still uh, bromamide styrene benzene Carbon tetrachloride. Oh, God, that's a horrible one. That's used, used to be used, I think it still is, in dry cleaning. And I used to have a product that I, that I would clean my clothes with, with carbon tetrachloride in. It's damn bad for you. Methyl acetate. These do contribute to such conditions as cancer, liver, and kidney damage, central nervous system impairment, asthma, and reproductive impairments. In high amounts, they kill people. You know, you just don't think about it, but hey, air and water pollution, both are habits. Lead, and by the way, aluminum too. Uh, lead from old pipes and paint, asbestos. Ladies and gents, if you use, especially women, if you use underarm pers antiperspirant that has aluminum in it, and many, many do, it's pretty strongly related to breast cancer. It is. There's good research on that. Uh, bad too. Pardon? Talcum powder is bad too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There have been you know, 34 major studies that combined looking at aluminum. They've done, you know, the the grand analysis of 34 studies. And Round the evidence up with them all our food. Yeah. It's it the evidence is strong about aluminum. Just that very recent that that grand analysis has come out, come out. Okay, exercise. Supposedly vigorous bursts, bursts now and then, and exercising three to five times a week, more if you're sedentary, and I'm sedentary. Listen, every pound of muscle in the body, for every pound of muscle, we burn 35 calories. For every pound of fat, we burn two calories. Over what time period? Pardon? Over what time period? Uh, Every pound of muscle, we burn 35 calories in a day, in an hour. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Just an hour. I, just I don't know. Hour. That's a good question. Oh. charts to show you how many calories you burn per day just doing nothing yeah. based on your body weight yeah. and the test. Yeah. Every 50 calories burned. Basically what this is saying is that if you have a lot of muscle, you can just sit for a long time and, and you'll burn more calories, even if you don't do any exercise. And on the other yeah. hand, <laughs> the fat but it burns few calories. But the muscle to break down either. No. Yeah. Very helpful. 
Shut up. So exercise in general leads to less body fat, reduces cardiovascular, cardiovascular and diabetic diseases. Important are a couple different kinds of exercises. The aerobic kinds, that's the kind that gets your heart beating. Uh, and you, you, you're, you're breathing more rapidly. Walking, swimming, cycling, exercise machines. A second kind is strength training. That's called resistance exercise. And it's desirable to build up and maintain the muscles mass and to keep the body. It also helps with uh, bone density. Muscles do decline with age, damn it. And lifting weights such as barbells or using resistance machines are good examples of, tr of, of uh, strength training. Uh, Kathy got a Pilates machine that she doesn't use. It's really, it's non-electric, it has uh, elastic bands, and uh, I use that. It's something that you push with your feet like this, and it's similar to bicycle riding, and uh, you can u also use it for, but I, I use that in the middle of winter when I don't want to take the time to go out or it's too damn cold and, and wet, I use a Pilates machine. There, there are all kinds of other machines, you know, they're track machines and so forth, uh, but that's a good one. I also use barbells. You know, I have eight pound barbells. You can use, you know, you can get them two pounds and you can get 20 pounds. And or a can of food. And <laughs> yeah, and, and I push them above my head and I push them this way and then I use them behind my back and put them up like that. Uh, and I get on the floor and do stretches. And I do stuff for my midsection here. That kind of stuff. <laughs> and this kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and bridges like that, and holding it. And so. Supposedly, those of us who are fidgeters burn more calories than those who are not. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. God help me if what I'd be like if I didn't fidget. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I'd be in real trouble. <laughs> if that, that's true, then you know. <laughs> that stuff is boring, and and and. and Look, I'm obsessed with aging and concern. I don't want to be unable to walk and get around. Those repetition things are all a lot easier and more pleasant if you do them to a good background beat. Yes. Or yes. with a partner. Excuse yes. me? Or with a partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, There's another thing that makes me want to exercise. I was kind of saying how I can probably probably go out of the house the way I am right now. I used to do more outdoor activities when I lived in Alaska and farther north, but it's my dog that keeps me active. <laughs> Look, days I wouldn't want to go to work at all, and I do it because I want him to be happy. Yeah. 
not enough motivation for me. My dog is born. <laughs> I'm certainly not trying to tell anyone how to live, and I mean that. It's like, hey, I respect every person. And what I am saying is if if it becomes a high concern for you, if it becomes a high concern to have healthy aging, then think about this kind of stuff. Next, diet. Diets that are low in sugars and processed flour. Diets that are high in fiber, greens, and preferably several colors of vegetables and fruits. Diets that are low in red meat, like pork and lamb and beef. They're all suspect. Fatty fish, like tuna and sardines and salmon. There's much, much evidence now that they help. Uh, you made a salad while we were there. It had sardines in it. That was delicious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're going vegetarian or vegan, it's hard to get enough protein. We must be thoughtful if we do vegetarian. Uh, and I want to say, you know, there's a lot of evidence now, but it's not profitable to do cause and effect studies, and it's hard to do them with humans. It's hard to say, okay, I want you guys to just eat fruit and make sure you get five helpings a day, and you guys don't have any. We just don't do that, do we? So, hey, on the other hand, there there is evidence from people who eat a lot of fruit and uh, <coughs> unfortunately it's contaminated evidence but over time there's so much so much evidence it piles up and it looks good there seems to be an inverse relationship between dietary intake of antioxidant rich food plus <coughs> medicinal spices and incidence of diseases, human diseases. That means the more antioxidants you can get, the less di disease and, and aging effects. And let's look at antioxidants for a minute. Here they are, the foods and the spices. Fruits and berries, blueberries, blackberries, cherries, grapefruit. But you might not think about this. There are a lot of medicinal <coughs> plants that are very, very important and can aid you with aging. Olives, garlic, turmeric. That's a very, very important one. Cinnamon, mango, curry leaves, black cumin, basil, hot peppers, I'm ginger. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this book sounds really good. <laughs> All of those have strong antioxidant <laughs> properties and the vegetables. I've given you a list there. You can read the list. Uh, nuts and seeds are high in fats and proteins. A general principle, the less cooking, the better. Cooking breaks down food, reduces fiber and nutrients, and the nutrients are burned off or they dissipate in water. If possible, use a steamer in cooking. Frying, especially deep uh, frying, is ordinarily a negative. If frying is necessary, use a small amount of olive oil. Kathy and I just had a kind of argument here. Her dad, who is an MD and studies this kind of stuff, said, oh boy, if you're going to cook, it might be better to use... He was saying saturated fats like Crisco and butter because... He's saying when you cook the olive oil, it transforms it. Yeah, if you heat it too if high. Too if hot. you heat it too high. But yeah. you aren't supposed to heat it too hot. Right. Yeah. I did notice, however, when he cooked for us when we were down there, he used a little olive oil. And I said, I'm not going to shift on my... And that's what I do is I just use a little bit of olive oil. I've heard grapeseed oil is like the best one to use for... 
saute and stuff, mm -hmm. and that's what we've been using. I, I don't really know anything about, much more about yeah, it. Yeah, that's a hot sauce. Great, mm -hmm. not great. But that great, may be. Great seed oil. Yep, great seed oil has a high glass. Okay, high glass? High glass point. Okay. That's why you want to make sure your yeah, temperature's not too high. Yeah, that's, that's high glass the problem with a lot of them is it's, it's not so much you know, right. what it good for you, not just how high can you <coughs> cook at them, because, you know, they just can't taste the heat. Right. Mm. You know, I've never been a lot of beef fat fried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, and I've probably cooked fried chicken five times in my life. And at least several of those were because we did a southern dinner when we were up in Maine, and I put, gave people fried chicken. But One of the worst things you can do is, is use charcoal and burn the meat. Oh, I love steak that's just burned on the outside a little bit, you know? Oh, and ah, it's not good for you. Uh, the less cooking, the better, at any rate. And, and hey, there's some limited research, but it's interesting. White tea is better than green tea, which is better in turn than black tea. Black tea, they roast. And green tea, they, they heat up a bit. Uh, and, and, and white tea, they don't do any, any of the cooking. Uh, hey, it's like, think about products in terms of amount of processing and cooking. And the more processing and cooking, the less you can get the, the good nutrients and the more, the less fiber, too. Of course, that all leads to the raw food diet, which I've heard yeah. conflicting yeah. evidence about. Yeah. Which, you know, I mean, obviously... We'd all do better if we lived with the chimps for a couple of years, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. you have to be careful with this stuff around babies. Some raw foods aren't good for kids. No. Honey, for example. Yeah. yeah. Well, young babies. Uh, Ron, of Ron and Raven, his family is vegetarian, and he is too. And I remember hearing that he, at this point, cannot eat meat-based protein because his body just can't handle it because yeah. it didn't have any exposure to it. I was vegetarian for over a decade when I was younger. I could, I could tell if there was meat or something that made me right. sick to me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way that is. Next, next item. Boy, do what your physician tells you about supplements. But remember that there's now, at this point in time, the evidence is built up and up and up that most supplements and multivitamins do little good and... They often do harm. There are good studies now that over time, people who have been taking supplements like for 20 years, mm -hmm. they die a bit sooner. Now, uh, folic acid, calcium, iron, or vitamin E, recent uh, evidence suggests that vitamin A, E, beta carotone, and these in pill form, quote, may increase mortality risk, although studies more prone to bias report the reverse. Now, what that means is, you know, you find somebody who's really into health and he's been taking vitamin A for 20 years and he's doing a great, great job. Whereas somebody else who hasn't been taking it and has been just sitting watching TV all the time, he's doing poorly. So it's like, that's the problem. You can find studies that are poorly done, that introduce biases, and it'll look like, oh my gosh, you take this vitamin and it'll help you. And every damn day, there's stuff that's coming out on AOL and elsewhere. So-and-so has found that vitamin so And look, they make literally hundreds of millions and billions of dollars over some years in hawking this stuff. Yeah. Well, things like B3, use it in moderation. Also, what you may 
you may be taking too much of something um, that you're already getting elsewhere in your diet and yes. then yes that could cause a problem yes. you need to look at what you're eating and what you're lacking in your diet could possibly be supplemented with one of these supplements and yes. I'd be willing to change your diet but yes. I don't think the supplements themselves are necessarily bad I think that that they are the overuse of them can yes. be bad and also uh, also what's on the label may not actually be what's yes. in the pill because some companies are not um Not reputable companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you have to look at the company and go by, you know, their reputation and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. The research would suggest that that may not be so, and it's even reputable companies. It's like, um, look, our bodies were constructed to to consume a, a wide variety of phytochemicals that are found in natural foods. If you try to extract and say, oh, wait a second, this food is high in vitamin A, and now let's find it in, in the purest form we can, and then you get a pill for that, mm -hmm. that may not help, and as a matter of fact, it may, it may harm you. It's, the problem is not that the vitamin itself is, is bad, but they purify to the extent that they leave out the major aspects that you get in, in natural foods that help you. And so, that's yeah. one of the issues, and they, uh, it's like. Yeah, but I agree with you, Sarah. Yeah, my iron On the iron other hand, if, if your physician tells you, hey, you're low in vitamin D3, which some people are, by the way, that may be a good thing to take, and you may, and it may be, yeah, it may be better if you found the foods and filled yourself up with those, but people ordinarily don't do that. So there are some vitamins that a physician will say, hey, take this, and it makes sense. The D levels fluctuate wildly depending on how much sunlight you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could have like a lot of D one day and hardly any the next. Your, yeah. your levels fluctuate. Carol, <laughs> my red blood cells have been down for like a year and a half. Because it's not a lack of iron that's causing it. Possibly something else, but it, I mean it's come up some, but it's not still it's still not what it should be. But um, I Carol, think, I you, believe it's something. You, you have to be really careful because remember the people who are hawking this can hire quote experts, and they're they're trying to make millions off you, mm -hmm. but the people who do the research and aren't paid by the companies that are producing this, the people who do those kind of research say, hey, wait a second, it's not really good for you. And there are only a couple of major exceptions, and I've listed them here, vitamin D and B12 might be both useful for you, I think there are but two most things. of the others are not. I, I think there are two the things that, that you can... You can take almost as much of it as you want, and they, they won't hurt you. They can be helpful to you. One of them is B12 and the, the B supplements, because mm -hmm. that's one of the things that your body will just excrete. Mm -hmm. If you have too much of it, it'll just excrete it. Right. And the other thing is vitamin C. Mm -hmm. You can take loads and loads and loads of vitamin C, and the worst right. thing that's going to happen is, you know, you might get You'll excrete stomach. it. Yeah. You'll excrete <laughs> it, all right. Well, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I take CoQ10, CoQ10 every day. I take um, fish oil every day because we don't we have fish that you know. Fish oil is is, is a natural yeah. substance, and so there's nothing wrong with that. I do take calcium every day, and I was on pretty high doses of vitamin D. I am now out of the osteopenia diagnosis, in part I think because I've had mega doses of vitamin D for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, I've taken, I went to the kidney doctor and he told me to take 5,000 vitamin D. And then I go to my endocrinologist and she says, your vitamin D is too high. So <laughs> I got all this 5,000 
and buy me beef. I take mm -hmm. it like every three, four days. Because yeah. I'm not going to go throw that away and yeah. Yeah. cut it in half. Mm -hmm. It's a cat. It's a jail cat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think, you know, your point though, Carol, about you need to look at what you're eating. And if there's something you're low in, yes, you may need to supplement that if it's such a valid point. Mm -hmm. But I want to also point out that, you know, we've got copycat food out there now. It's mm -hmm. like honey. They're taking all the benefit out of it. It's not real honey. It's not real honey and olive oil, mm -hmm. things that are expensive. So, you know, you think you're getting good benefit from olive oil and stuff, and it's not, you know, honey and some other expensive items. Sure. With some things like B12, some people's body is, and I, I suspect mine is one of them, that your body will not absorb it by mm -hmm. eating it. It's, it has to do with the way your intestines are. That's one of the things that I did take just to be sure. Mm -hmm. you, can eat, okay. you can eat as much of it as you want, and it's not going to help you much because it just <coughs> the way your body's made, it just doesn't absorb it properly from your intestinal. So you can either take it by injection, which is good, but have any or you can do the sublingual you know stuff where it actually absorbs through your tissues and stuff like that and that seems to help a good bit yeah I also do a senior multivitamin every day just to cover the basics and make sure <laughs> we're ever going to fill up I think taking some niacin niacin yeah, can also help our focus and focus very good, right? good for anti-inflammatory inflammation yeah. like yes. that plus um, recently in the last few weeks I started using hemp oil mm -hmm. not legal kind, but the, um, it's the kind that's legal in all 50 states. Like <coughs> <laughs> and you can buy it on Amazon. So I don't think you have to worry about nah, justifying that to us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not the illegal. We don't care. I want to shift. I want to shift now and talk about. I want to talk about things other other than the food and, and vitamins and so forth, supplements. Uh, another area is just general stress. You know, sometimes, even in the middle of the night, I'll wake up with a kind of bad dream, and I realize <coughs> I'm hot. It's, that's the inflammatory part of stress. If you worry and, and get upset, you get hot. And it's important to try and reduce that stress. One of the things I do is I meditate in, in the middle of the night if I need to and bring my stress down. And then my dreams get pleasanter. But socialization is also important in stress reduction. This means friends and organizations. You need to find people to talk to who are supportive and kind who will listen to you without criticism and without right away saying, oh, why don't you do this? Who will listen to you? Avoid those people and organizations that have strong hierarchies. Uh, your voice should count. The right kind of socialization reduces stress. And one of the things that we have in here is we can talk to each other and we don't insult and we don't say, oh, you're wrong. And, you know, it's like this is a good organization in terms of aiding you to be able to talk at times. It helps, especially if you can be in an organ, actually, if you can be in a group that has seven or less people right around there because you can talk more freely. Sex and petting. What? <laughs> <laughs> nice timing, guys. <laughs> uh, they increase. <laughs> Sorry, Sebby. No, I don't care. Great time. He's the, he's the one who. They increase red. dopamine and stimulation of pleasure centers of the brain and result in lower blood pressure. <laughs> Yoga, meditation, massage, they are all beneficial. Long nature walks are helpful. Uh, so. He's gonna be talking about that for a while. <laughs> Brain stimulation. Games, length, learning a new language, 
keep learning and working, go to new places. And sorry, I just had to say, and just think, my fellowship friends, you can attain all of these at the NRUUF if you try. That's a joke. <laughs> That's a joke. Hey, hello. <laughs> At any rate, okay. uh, thanks. it's been an honor to be able to talk to you. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks, Randy. Good presentation. Good. Very nicely.